really don't know what to do this week. Let me figure something out and figure it out quick. What are you waiting for, Jason? Get that new box. You know the one I'm talking about. Everybody wants it. Give it to them. Got it. I know what to get. Alright. Curse City. We're gonna knock this one out. We'll do some zombies, maybe the skeletons. I don't know. Those vampires and heroes, those are some pretty awesome models too. No, not Curse City. That's old and broken. Everybody's done it. You need the new one. The new hotness. No, not Curse City. Dominion. Dominion is where it's at right now. Do knock out Drasta, maybe do a build paint video with her. Or the Killer Boss on the Nash Tooth. That's an awesome model. Maybe do a speed painting. Who knows? What? What? Are, what are you doing? Not Dominion. That's not new. That's like weeks old. I said the new one. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm talking old. about? Let's get the beast snags, man. What am I speaking go. Greek over here? Oh my god. Beast snags. That's where it's at. Let's break it out. When I saw what was going to be in the box, and I knew that there was one specific figure that I wanted to build out of that, and that is Zodgrod Wurtsnaga. I have the original one from second edition, and with them re-releasing him, I knew it just, it was a model that I had to build. So let's go ahead and get him clipped out. And now it's time to clean up the edges of the pieces and get them ready for assembly and paint. When assembling, I start with a dry fit and then I'll add a bead of glue once I know that the pieces fit together nice and snug. Uh, this is just to make sure that there's a, a good you know, solid hold like between the two pieces and there's no gaps and just like a really good fit. Once I get them on the base, you know, I uh, compare them to the old model and you can see just how much bigger the new one is, how much more details. Then I move on to basing and for that I just use some tacky glue, which is basically really thick, sticky uh, uh, PVA glue. And then I just dip it into a basing mixture that I've made just uh, with sand and uh, different types of ballast. And then I bust out the Stenorez Black Surface Primer and start giving the entire model a, a nice even coat of this, just so there's a, a good surface for all of the rest of the paint to adhere to. Now 
Next is a titanium white uh, zenithal highlight. Uh, and this is going to be more than just a zenithal. I'm really going to work it into those green areas so uh, my next color uh, uh, really pops on those. Uh, so it's a very heavy zenithal. For the next step, I decided to go ahead and just add some color to the base. And for this, I mix a couple different browns to get something I'm happy with. And really, I just slap it on there. Make sure to not get any on the feet, uh, because then you have to touch up before you add the, the skin color. And for the skin, I'm using Golden's Green Gold. Um, this is almost an equivalent of the uh, Plague Bearers flesh. This is a little brighter, uh, a little bit uh, more fluorescent, uh, but you could easily replace this with Plague Bearer flesh, which is has a little bit more of an olive hue to it. And don't worry about how bright this color is right now because we're going to go through some additional steps, and that's going to tone it down and bring it more into a realistic color for it. Now I'm going to use some sap green from Liquitex and I'm going to very, very slowly build up uh, shadows and depth like underneath the, on the lower portions of the skin. Um, this is kind of just the, the reverse of the zenithal highlight. It's now just a, a shade. Now I take some Liquitex Dioxazine Purple and I start painting in his reptile skin cloak here. Uh, this is, the inks are very translucent so that zenithal highlight shines through. You can use any like contrast paints here so that Shaiish Purple or the Magos Purple would both work in this instance. Or you can make your own just adding some glazing mediums to say like Nagaroth Night or any color that you wanted to add to this. I then use Mechanicus Standard Gray, and I just add some color to his uh, trousers. Then I grab some Fire Slayer Flesh contrast paint and I paint in the leather uh, bags on his back. Next I grab some Saigor Brown and I use this to add some color to the stabs, like both of his, uh, his little hook and then his grot prod. I take Exhaust Manifold from Vallejo's Metal Color range and I start blocking in all of the steel and brass areas uh, with this. This is a nice warm uh, kind of silver color 
so I think it works really well with this model. Next, I start blocking in some white over uh, just a few more areas of um, the model here, like parts of his staff and then his, uh, his shoulder armor. And I start blocking in all the brass areas using Balthazar Gold. The snake bite symbol and one of the hoses from his grab prod get a base of Averlin Sunset. I freehand in some uh, symbols on his uh, shoulder armor there. Um, I try to keep it Close to this, um, it's pretty difficult with the head on there though. Um, I wasn't able to capture it on camera. I give all of the all of the hair on the model a coat of somber gray from Vallejo Game Air. I mix up two oil washes for the model. Uh, one is going to be green with black for all of the skin uh, parts and the other is brown and black and that's going to cover all the rest of the model and base. And as you start slapping on this oil wash you kind of get thoughts of what have I just done <laughs> to all of this work I just completed. But it pays off in the long run. It'll give a nice deep shaded area. And uh, once you go through the next step, like, you know, wiping it off, like it, it really makes the, uh, the model look pretty great. Hey guys, quick reminder, if you're enjoying the video, go ahead and give me a like and subscription down below. It really goes a long way to helping me out with this channel. And while you're at it, hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I publish new videos. All right, well, let's get back to painting. Now I take some makeup sponges and Q-tips and I'm gonna go over the entire model and just start dabbing and wiping away the excess oil wash and you'll see like in the crevices it's going to leave some shading there it's going to stain the colors so they're a little deeper than what they were and even as you're wiping it off like you can see on the the metal bit here that 
it it leaves some staining to make it look like you know the bits are like tarnished and old so it gives a very nice effect like to a model like this I mix up a couple of my highlight colors using titanium white and green oil paints for the flesh tones, and then a burnt sienna and a titanium white for the leathers. Um, and then I begin, you know, just adding little tiny dots of this color where a highlight needs to be. And once I get those down, I'll take a clean, dry brush and I will just feather that highlight into the, the surrounding area. This and it makes a very nice transition and it's a very nice highlight. Um, this obviously is not needed. You don't have to use oils. You could mix up or find a, a corresponding acrylic color and just kind of uh, layer that on as needed. Once you start feathering that uh, highlight into the surrounding area, you get some really just kind of creamy transitions like in between that highlight and then the mid-tone and shadows. I grab some Mechanicus Standard Gray and I begin adding highlights to those trousers. Um, I'm using the original color that I put down for the base because I don't really want these to stand out and I think it gives a nice highlight just bringing it back to that original color. Next I grab some Stormhost Silver and I'm going to start highlighting up all of those silver and steel pieces just by adding you know, dots and scratches and dings, you know, kind of randomly like on edges that, you know, might receive uh, some damage to be worn down to that original metal color. Next I grab the Canoptic Alloy, which is by far my favorite paint right now to uh, highlight up brass bits. Uh, and I just, again, just start adding nicks and dings through any, uh, any of the pieces that are uh, brass.
I use smoke from Vallejo and I thin it down and I just kind of dab it on the model in areas where the wash left darker areas to make it look like recesses, recesses and divots and just where dirt and grime has built up on the model. Now I use some Gene Stealer Purple to start highlighting up his cloak. Um, I focus on the raised scales and just hit the higher edges of those. I don't really need to add too much highlights to this cloak because of the, the transparency of the ink that I used and the zenithal highlight that really shines through. Now I'm taking Vallejo Game Color Steel Gray and I'm going to start layering up that color onto the hair. I take each individual like, lock of hair uh, that's matted together there and I just I try to give like the, the topmost area of that um, uh, a highlight and anything that's going to be towards the front of the model and leaving that initial somber gray. Um, on the lower areas and in the back recesses. For the final highlight of the hair, I'm using Fenrisian Gray. And I'm going to take this and just kind of do a little line highlight in areas where uh, there's going to be the, the most uh, light reflection off of the hair. Very high points, um, any hard edges that I can find on here. Not that there would be hard edges on hair, but it's an orc. Who knows? I grab some Dorn Yellow and I go ahead and I use this to highlight the edges of the uh, snake bite symbol on his cloak. Um, I imagine this is another piece of dyed leather, so I just do like little, you know, um, dashes and stuff along the edges uh, so it's not a, a hard edge highlight, it just kind of looks like scuffed and worn leather. I add some colors to the teeth to uh, bring those up to a bone color. Start with some Steel Legion Drab, and then I'll highlight up from there using Xandry Dust. And then I do a final highlight of Screaming Skull, leaving subsequent layers barely visible just so I have a good transition. And he looks like he's got some really just dirty teeth.
I mix up a glaze using Nagaroth Knight and Lamian Medium, and I just start you know, adding this to different parts of the skin, such as the elbows, the knuckles, um, and like the gums around the mouth and the lips, and just to build up a little bit of color variation. Uh, and I'll just do this, and after it's dry, I'll add another layer until I'm happy with uh, the color. I finish off the face by painting in the eyes uh, with Mephiston Red and then I give them a nice little uh, dot highlight uh, with just some uh, Corax White. And then I give the entire model a spray with some Vallejo Matte Varnish. And this will bring all of the colors down to the same finish. And just like that, Zadgrad is finished. Uh, this was a fantastic model to build and to paint. It really brought me back to whenever I first started playing 40K. Uh, Zadgrad, the original one, was probably one of the first models that I ever painted. And if I'd have known you know, now, or if I'd have known then what I know now, uh, my model probably would have turned out a little differently then. Uh, but this new model really does the old one justice, just the, the new take of that crazy runt herder. Um, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, this paired up with the new Gaskell model and uh, the Makari, they brought him back. It's, it's uh, bringing back a lot of good memories for me. And uh, I'm glad you guys could join me here while I, you know, painted this. Uh, thanks again, and I will see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks again for joining me here on Level Up Hobbies as I painted up Zadgrad Wartsnaga, the most famous runt herder of all of the orc clans. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like and subscribe down below. And while you're at it, go ahead and hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I publish new videos. Thanks again, and remember, build, paint, and play tabletop games. Later, guys.